to make some nice simple beef jerky. My kids love beef jerky. It's a good way for them to eat something that's not a chicken nugget. It's a bit of a snack instead of crisps. Um, and it comes with a few simple ingredients and no additives. So all we're going to be going through today is we've got here uh, around about 800 grams to a kilogram of just frying steak, sandwich steak if you will. Um, we've then got some soy sauce, we've got some Worcestershire sauce, we've got some white pepper and then an optional is if you want some liquid smoke which you can also buy in the supermarkets but it's not an essential at all. Essentially what we're looking for is a mixture of the soy which is introducing the salt and some of the Worcester sauce adds a little bit of the spice and then the white pepper just adds that little bit of background heat. Once you go through this recipe you'll be able to adapt it however you want. That could be uh, adding smoked paprika or some chilli sourcing um, but all we're going to take through is just really now how to prepare the meat. Okay so the first step that you're going to want to do is hammer those sandwich steaks. So depending on how thin or thick they are this also helps tenderise makes it easier when you come to bite and eat them. So we're just going to be doing some hammering. We're going to hammer out all of the steaks. Okay? The next thing that you want to be doing is just to carve out any bits on, on the steak that you don't like. So there might be um, some, some particular fat runs and uh, gristle in there. But either way what we're going to be doing eventually is just trimming out kind of about around about a centimetre wide strips of steak, essentially like this. Uh, the offcuts are loved by our dog, but don't worry if you go too thin or too long. We're just looking for nice chunks of what's going to become jerky. So again, you can get quite brutal with this, just slicing up after you've trimmed and beaten up your meat. So whilst you're hammering out, you'll start to notice that the, the, the fibres of the meat will start moving in one direction. And ideally what we're looking for when we're going to cut is kind of to cut across them and not go with them. This will make it easier when you're eating and you go to bite off. Okay, so you might be able to see on here that we have all of the tendons and fibres going in this direction, which means that when we go to cut, we're going to cut like so. Leaving nice strips that essentially, if we keep pulling, will then break apart. After we've now cut all these up, we're going to plonk all of our cut bits in the bowl. These bits over here, which we've cut out, you can see this is kind of like the sinew and, and uh, bits between the muscles. We uh, discard those over to the side and we give those to the dog. He gets a nice treat. But we're now just going to be adding in our wet ingredients. These act as part of a curing process and, and also just add some flavouring. So in there we're going with the soy and the Worcester sauce. Um, the, the amounts are in the description below. You're looking for roughly a 50-50 amount. Um, it doesn't matter if there's too much, it really doesn't matter if it's too little. On top of that, we're also going to be adding in some white pepper. So in here we've got around about a, a heaped teaspoon. Um, don't worry about that, just adds a little bit of, of background heat to our jerky. And then optional is if you have any liquid smoke, you can put in some liquid smoke. And as I said before, you can also mess around with other flavourings. Now we'll just start, we'll just mix that in a bit. You can use your fingers, don't worry about it. Okay, we're just looking to mix all those ingredients. Now we're going to be putting these all into our food bags. No point getting squeamish about this. Uh, I'm just going to pop in around about half into this one and half into another one. The reason why I'm doing half is that in the other one I'm going to throw in some liquid smoke as a bit of an option. You don't have to do that, um, not essential at all. Um, it just creates a little bit more variety while we're eating. So here we are, we've got our two bags. And then we're just going to pop in some liquid seasoning into one of these. Around about two tablespoons will do. So now what we're going to do is just pop these into the fridge for around about 24 hours. Now we've taken our uh, marinated uh, jerky out from the fridge. And as you can see, it's soaked up all those lovely juices. Now what we're going to be doing is drying these. Uh, for this, we're going to be using our dehydrator over here, which is very, very easy to use. It's just a case of us putting our bits of beef and laying them out on the dehydrator, like so. Make sure that nothing is touching, and then space them all out. 
So once you've laid out all of your jerky to be dried, it's just a case of putting it into our dehydrator. Smacking those up. So we recommend 50 degrees and now we'll leave it for, it'll take anywhere from six to eight hours. Um, but you'll be able to check it and monitor it anyway by just picking it up and you'll see a very noticeable change after about four hours. Another option is to use your oven. Again, just set it to the lowest amount possible and depending on the type of oven, it may be worth just leaving the door open and letting that hot air blow over it for a number of hours. After around six hours or so, our jerky's ready. Just turn that off. So as we can see now, we grab some of the jerky. You can see it's got a bit of pull, a bit of bite, it's quite dry. The easiest way is just to test it by eating it. Now it's just a case of popping it all, once it's cooled, into an airtight jar and then ready for storage. And this will keep for, well, as long as myself and the kids stay away from it, to be honest with you. There we have it, one nice jar of beef jerky. Oi, get off!